Uh, my name is Dr. Sandra Cabot and I'm here today with my colleague and good friend, Dr. Marvin Anderson, who's come all the way from Michigan, where he has a practice specialising in helping children with autism. And he's come here to share his wonderful knowledge and research with us, which is wonderful because Dr. Anderson is a medical doctor who is a specialist in internal medicine and has a vast experience over many years of using nutritional medicine and, and really helping to reverse diseases holistically. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you today. Martin. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Nice to be here. Yes. Um, so today um, we're talking about your favorite subject and one that um, you, you've helped so many people overcome and that is autism. Now, not everybody understands autism. What does that mean? So I think if you could explain to us what, what that means and what the symptoms are. Well, it is a, um, a disease that uh, it probably has many causes and uh, there's a lot of overlap in, in the symptoms, but there are some commonalities. Yes. And the three of them that really come to mind, the classic ones, are, um, first of all, it is a, uh, a disease that affects communication. Yes. The children are largely, oftentimes, nonverbal. Yes. The second thing, it's a disease that, uh, an illness, that affects their sociability. Yes. The easiest thing to say is that they're, they're in a world of their own. Yes. They wander off and so on. Yeah. And then the last thing that is really a commonality, Sandra, is that um, there is a, 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 a tendency to do repetitious things yes. called stims. You know, they may twirl some beads around their, their fingers and so on like that. And if I could add a fourth, it's, 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 it's very, very frequently the gastrointestinal system is involved. Okay. And that does include mm. the liver. Yes. So they may have... Um, abdominal pain um, which they can't communicate about or they may have uh, bowel actions that are irregular? That is a very very good observation. Actually yeah. their inability to communicate leads to tremendous frustration. Yes. They can't tell you they're in pain so they may bang their heads or they may scream and cry out uh, there was a, a little boy in our clinic, and he had a computer there where he could indicate what he wanted, you know, on the computer screen. Mm -hmm. And he just went into a tantrum, you know, and we couldn't quiet him down. You know what he wanted? He took his computer screen, opened it up. He wanted a glass of water. Yeah. And so he'd have to point to what he wanted. That's right. Yeah. And we have to try to develop the language. Yes. Capacity. That's right. Yeah. Well, as you said, they, they have trouble communicating particularly trouble communicating verbally, um, but what is the, the form of communication that um, is most effective if, if you have a child with autism? It's very difficult. Um, you, you have to um, show them the object, yes. you know, and see if they want that, if they point to it or grab it, yes. you know. And then the next step is to, you know, ha show them a picture that's transportable. Yeah. And then the third thing is to try to have them have the machine say the word, like okay. water. Oh, yes. And it, when they point to it, and yeah. then maybe they will sooner or later say water. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Thank goodness for computers. <laughs> yeah, we're we're, gonna help we're in a world of computers where yeah. that's not going to change. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, okay. So you know, we we just, we say what is autism? It is a a condition that really restricts the ability of a human being to communicate. And what about to feel? You know, some people say that autistic uh, children don't have the same capacity to feel or empathise with another person. Well, for, for one thing, they sometimes have a great deal of, of uh, uh, hypersensitivity where they can't stand the their clothing, it's a way of feeling, I guess. Okay. You can't uh, mm. uh, stand their clothing on their body and they'll take it all off. Yes. <laughs> and that's happened. And, uh, and then the other thing is with regard to feeling, um, no, they can't empathize. They mm. can't anticipate like what you may be feeling 
and and the, and it's heartbreaking for the mothers that the mm. children show no abs no appreciation or no love you mm. know for them it's just a totally giving experience and then when they can come back and reciprocate would say i love you or hug them or so on it's such a great uh, advancement yes that's true uh, okay so um the definition of autism really is um, made by observing the behavior and the symptoms of the patient. There aren't uh, any tests that you could say, okay, this is categorical. No, there are no specific diagnostic tests. It's the diagnosis is behavioral, yes. and we use a, a 50 cent word. It's called a neurodevelopmental uh, neurologist who, who would, I oftentimes don't make the diagnosis, it takes somebody to look under the, uh, the specific DSM-3 codes or DSM-4 codes mm -hmm. and, and then tell us that yes, this child has autism or Asperger's disease, which is a higher form of functioning, higher functioning is autism. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, th the disease is not characterized by any specific test, but it's a behavioral diagnosis. And it's, if I might add, Sandra, the sooner it's made in life, the better off we are. Yes, that's right. So um, when should a parent start to look for the symptoms of autism? As early as possible. Yeah. And uh, there are um, some children that the mother will say, you know, as soon as they were born, I could tell they were different. Yes. You know? And uh, sometimes, uh, it's happening less now, they would take the child to the doctor and the doctor would say, oh, the child will grow out of it, come back in six months or a year. Mm -hmm. Meantime, valuable time is lost. Yes. Um, so um, the, the second thing is, is to be aware of the immunizations. Uh, certainly, um, immunizations are a factor. They're not the only factor. But uh, parents report that after the second uh, immunization to the M or in the MMR or whatever at 18 months, you know, yes. they, 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 within, within a weeks or less, they lose their speech. And yes. they, and, and they regress. So, and then they regress. Mm. So that's called regressive autism. And, and, and there's a large number of children that that happens to in about yes. a year and a half. Some, however, what is, it, it's an intrauterine situation. Yes. And as soon as they're born, it looks like there's something wrong. That's the time to act. Yes, so um, there's different manifestations in that it can occur straight away or further down the track, triggered by various environmental factors. But it's good to be aware um, of the normal milestones. And if your baby is not really communicating with you from what the age of three or four months, looking you in the eye and responding to emotional cues, if you like, then that would be a sign that Absolutely. you have Absolutely, the, the milestones are, are very important because, yeah. it, it, don't forget, it is a neurodevelopmental disorder, so they yes. have impairment in their neurological development, so that That's includes right. they're not talking at the, at the right time, and, mm. and their balance is not good, and they're, they're not walking, and these yes. are all clues, and yes. I think that's great to, to mm. be aware of that. Be aware of the milestones. So it's not just communication and emotional empathy, it's also motor skills that are affected in the majority. Yes, uh, one of their uh, 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 unusual impairments is, is that if there's a crack in the floor, they can, and if maybe only an eighth of an inch high, they can't discern that between an eighth of an inch and a foot high. Mm. And so they will, they will stop at, 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 at that, you know, wow. and thinking because they, they, they don't have the appreciation of depth. So, Interesting. Yes. Yeah, and that's universal, is it? No, no it's uh, not always universal. Um, they, there's, it's, it's the, I think the, things, the, the three things that we really discussed in the beginning, the sociability, the language, you know, and the repetitious behavior, yes. they seem to be common, yes. know, common factors. Okay, and the delay in milestones. So um, that's given um, us a, a great understanding um, of what autism is. And, um, you know, that's very, very important so we can recognize it early. And um, we're going to talk in the next segment on what are the causes of autism, which is a fascinating subject and very important to know so that hopefully we can avoid some of those causes. Yeah, so it's been great talking to you today, Dr. Anderson. Thank you. And sharing your vast knowledge on this subject. <laughs>